now. Okay, so Sdelio. Um, right here we're sitting uh, in front of our uh, dining room. Um, we're going to talk about that as well. Let's start with the kibbutz. What is a kibbutz? Have you heard something about a kibbutz? Mm -hmm. Could you tell me what you heard maybe? What do you know what a kibbutz is? Anyone? It's a community place, yes. It's a farm. Self-supporting self Self-supporting, self-sustained. And you said? I said it's like a commune. Like Communion, like yeah, a commune, yeah, yeah. but we're uh, religious. Uh, basically, everything you say is right. Uh, kibbutz doesn't necessarily have to depend on agriculture or any sort of thing like that. But in the, the beginning, when the kibbutz started the movement, this is exactly what they did. Um, we are a socialist society, not communist society. <laughs> Important, guys. Okay? What's the difference? Um, First one, as you said, we have religion tendency. And for example, this kibbutz is a religious kibbutz, a modern Orthodox kibbutz. You can see I have my uh, my kippah, a big one, uh, right here. It's a big <laughs> one, uh, <laughs> colorful and nice. Uh, you might see women here walk, married women with art covering their hair, uh, walking with pants, and the summer with shorts, as long as it's not too short. Too short, <laughs> and there's no problem. Um, so we are religious, that's the first thing, so we're not communists. The second thing, we also give the individual a center place in the kibbutz life. We understand that people need to be themselves, they need their own space, they need their own things. And we of course allow it and in many ways also encourage it. Even though again, we work for the greater good. Um, during the history, we, do, we did have our... In Israel, he would seem with tendency more to the communist side, uh, with more tendencies uh, to, to Russia even. Um, these are mostly the groups that came from Russia, or ideology that came from Russia after the revolution and uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. Sorry. Um, so what is the kibbutz? We started this communal uh, way of living. Um, <laughs> If we want to put it in one sentence, it would be uh, we give as much as we can and we get what we need. Uh, I think the key phrase is get what you need. Okay? It's not what you want, because you can't always get what you want, uh, but what you need. So the goods are supposed to take care of, of all our basic needs. Uh, if you want to go to the early days, this kibbutz was founded in 1939, okay? By a group of teenagers from Germany. Uh, 40 kids in overall, average age 16 to 17. Uh, the oldest guy in the bunch was 22. Forever, he will be remembered as the old man. Um, <laughs> and they came here. In the beginning, what does a kibbutz need to supply? What does a kibbutz need to give you first of all? A place to live. A place to live, shelter, and the first building to ever be built on the kibbutz is dining. the dining room. Uh, and a kibbutz, part of the idea is that everyone is equal. Men, women, doesn't, doesn't mind which job you have, we are all equal as men, as human beings. Um, so before we build houses for individuals, let's build something for, the, for everyone, right? For the greater good. A dining room, it's also important, it's where we eat, right? We can deliver ourselves food, it's what we need. Uh, it's a religious kibbutz, so it was also our synagogue. Uh, it's where you have meetings, have decision made. What do we do next with the kibbutz? Do we want to stay at kibbutz? Do we want to invest here? Do we want to start growing dates? Do we want to maybe let's try a vineyard? Who knows? Uh, all of that happens with the members gathered around, deciding together in a democratic way. Um, so today, what the kibbutz takes care of is from education and healthcare, taxes, food, water, electricity up to even activities for the children, for example, playing music, horse riding, soccer, uh, it can be swimming, it can be volleyball, uh, some activities for the kids, and even activities for the, for the adults, such as swimming, one second, yoga, or whatever they need. Uh, again, it's also good to have fun a little bit. Of course, in the old days, it did, didn't exist, but today, hydro uh, better. Yeah, yeah, just a quick question. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but does anybody uh, work off the kibbutz? Yes. 
We have around 60 members who work off the kibbutz. Uh, we'll get to it. Um, so, last thing to close your puzzle about the kibbutz. Uh, really, it's, we can talk about kibbutz systems for a whole day. Um, the members do not get salaries. Okay? Every member in the kibbutz doesn't get a salary. He gets pocket money. How does that happen? The salary where he works goes to the same bank account just as everyone else's. That bank account, which is filled with everyone's uh, salary, we pay taxes, everything we mentioned, everything we need. Um, with what's remaining, we also invest in the kibbutz and we also give the pocket money for the members, uh, which is basically an additional thing. You don't really need it to survive. It's more like money to go and spend for, for what you want. For example, uh, to give perfume, clothes, um, buy a new cell phone, buy a new computer, maybe a TV. Uh, you can save it, you can go, you can travel with it, buy overseas. It, it's your money. There, this is where our individual comes in. Okay? You have your own thing as well. Um, so this is really, really, in short, a, the way of life in a kibbutz. Uh, a little bit of this kibbutz. We said teenagers, 40 kids. Uh, from Germany, uh, in the 40s we got reinforcements from uh, Italy, and in the early 50s we got uh, Yemen groups that came and stayed here after they came from Yemen, and during the operation uh, that Israel did to get them to Israel from Yemen. 60s we got a lot of French, and 80s we got some Anglo-Saxons, you can hear my accent is not typical Israeli. I know German. Um, True. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's because my mom is American, my father's South African. Uh, yeah. Just like my wife! <laughs> so, yes. I have a question about your children. I know in some people seem they're separated from their parents, right? What are, what are they doing here? Uh, she heard in some people seem that children are separated from their parents. We'll get to that okay. uh, later on the tour. Um, this kibbutz, it, it, it's, it's not anymore. Yeah.